most important lessons that I've learned in my life have come from doing and mentors. On a day-to-day -day basis, it's reducing the time between when you wake up and when you begin working, right? A lot of people lollygag and delay and procrastinate and things like that. And if you just think about it, there's only a certain amount of time in the day, I want mm -hmm. to increase my output per unit of time as much as possible. A lot of people have these superstitions that they have to do a certain thing or they must do X, Y, and Z. But all you have to do is talk to a single mom who has like five kids and no they still start businesses. They're not doing any of that stuff. They're waking up and they're working before their kids are up. And then once their kids go to bed, they work then too, right? And they're not doing all the lollygag stuff that, you know, you see up trending all over social media. It's like they're working. And so like the single greatest skill, in my opinion, is being able to find a, a place that you can shut out external stimuli and you can focus. Yes. Because for me, the single, the single highest ROI habit that I have is that for me, between 5 a.m. and noon, I have nothing on my calendar. It is just work no meetings and then all my meetings happen after noon mm -hmm. this is for the entrepreneur now if you're if you're like in a job right now then it's got to be in the morning before you go to work and mm -hmm. in the evening after you come back from work but like having that dedicated time and if you're like well i'm not a morning person fine then just work late like that's okay like right. i've i've got billionaire buddies who are like oh i wake up at 10 but they work really late that's their special time that no one bothers them it tends to be at the bookends of the day though just from my experience because in the middle of the day you get pestered and it's hard to get into that deep focus that really that deep learning that you get when you really pour yourself into something i knew what needed to be done so i didn't need more information i needed more execution right so if you look at your own self it's like do i need more information or do you more execution now if you're ignorant in terms of knowing what you need to do to succeed you need to go like what needs to be done is you need to find out that information but once you know what needs to be done anything that is you not doing that thing is getting in the way of you accomplishing what you want and i'm saying this again because people always want to make you know progress on a hundred fronts sometimes like you have so much growth juju you only have so much and you have to allocate it to the things that are highest priority and if it's a priority, then it means saying no to everything else. You order your tasks in order of the leverage that they have. The definition of leverage is you get more output per unit of input. If I do a little bit and I get a lot, I have a lot of leverage. You simply have some things that you get more money per period of time and less money per period of time. That's it. What are the tasks that get us the most output? For example, I could make sales calls. That is going to be a one-to-one -one input of like, I do this effort and I get sales out of it. With that same level of effort, if I could go recruit a salesperson, which would take me a finite period of time, and then that person replaces that my ongoing support for that person is going to be two, three hours a week. So I gain back 20 hours a week of prospecting in exchange for two to three hours a week plus money. And so the act of entrepreneurship is simply consistently making these trades of what can I buy my time back with, even to the point where you had an entire company leading to one person and that person talks to you. I plan the night before, I know what I'm going to do the moment I wake up, and then upon waking up, I pretty much just start getting to work, and I have my first four, six hours of the day dedicated to moving those things forward. And for a lot of people, that's hard, but I think that so is being successful, and you just have to pick what kind of hard you want. Being broke is hard, so is being successful. It's just one of them, you know, might get you closer to your goals. I think it's more important to have a bedtime than it is to have a wake-up time. You might you know, hear me say, yes, I wake up at 4 a.m., but that might mean that it's 4.45 some days, it might mean it's 3.10 some days, it might mean it's even 5.30 some days. I'm more inclined to just go to sleep earlier and wake up when I wake up than trying to you know, get myself out of bed uh, when I'm exhausted. And from all the very, very wealthy people that I, I know, they value the quality of sleep that they have. Not that they're obsessed with it, because I know that I can work on four hours of sleep for a very long period of time, but I make better high quality decisions uh, when I'm well rested. There's how do I get other people to do things? And so that's why I called this like fuck end of week, right? Is that one of the things, one of my biggest pet peeves is like, yeah, I can get to that by, by end of week. I'm like, why don't you just get it to me in an hour? Because that's how long it takes. And then all of a sudden it's like, Oh, it's like, well, well, I have a meeting right then. It's like, is it more important than this? No, okay, well then do it. Like, if you think about how you can run an organization like that, if you can get things done end of day, right, rather than end of week, you are literally speeding up the organization 7X. Think about that. And so when you're thinking about deadlines and you're thinking about expectations, you as the owner can set the, you set the cadence. If people say, hey, can we do this? And then you're like, cool, let's start right now. You set the tone for how the organization is going to move, how quickly it's going to orient, how quickly thoughts become reality, and ultimately how powerful the organization will become because of the speed, right? And speed isn't doing things fast. It's basically just not being distracted by other shit that doesn't matter. It's being able to prioritize. And most people, a lot of the times, aren't doing something that's high priority, right? A lot of times they're just doing nothing.
if you can speed up that loop and force and and put apply pressure to your team to not do things by end of week or even end of day it's like it's 10 a.m can you get this done by noon uh okay and then you can have that loop happen three times within a day rather than it taking three weeks right because you've set that cadence from the beginning and then things get done faster they interviewed the top olympic medalists and they found that they don't actually love winning they hate losing when they win they experience relief not euphoria if you look at steve jobs he wasn't some happy go lucky dude who was like man i just want to make the world a better place he was a tough dude to work for but he created something beautiful from that pain mj you look at kobe they had imaginary situations that they created in their minds to create more suffering in their own lives to motivate them and use as fuel so many people are believing a lie they have to be happy, they have to have purpose, passion for what they're doing in order to get out of their situation. They think that they are poor because they don't have passion. That is false. You are poor because you're not doing the activities that make you rich. And you can fuel those activities whatever way you damn well please. And so if you are somebody who is more motivated by the dark side, then lean into the dark side. Unlike the saying, the road to hell is paved with good intentions, the equal opposite of that is the road to heaven is paved with bad intentions. You can do good shit with bad motivation. And when I say bad, I mean negative experiences, pain, anger, etc. I still have tons of motivation from that side. You can use that negative fuel, hit it on speed dial. Every time you're confronted with that thing that you don't want to do, you push through it. And what happens, you do that enough times, you start to get good at the thing. You start seeing the result of work that has compounded and start to see a purpose or start to see a bigger vision. The big vision for Alex's life until maybe four years ago was don't be broke. You must pick a goal and do so much work that it would be unreasonable for you not to succeed. That if you were to look back, having done an amount of work that it would be virtually impossible for you to fail, that you said, I did that. And I can promise you that if you do that level of work, that volume of activity over an extended period of time, and to, to quote Neil Strauss, without thinking you're smarter than you are, uh, you will probably get there in half the time. But you have to start, and you have to start that first hour. When you're early on, you learn this much and you think you know everything. And it's something called the Dunning-Kruger effect. The more you learn in a specific skill, the more you realize you don't know. If you go for the earning early, you stop the learning. And the moment you stop the learning is when you decide and you tell the universe that I have made enough. This is enough for me. Start at the bottom and learn every skill along the way. Kobe Bryant was famous for doing this where he would do two practices a day. My name is Kobe Bryant, 17 years old. Fridays and Saturdays, I would go in my rec room with my basketball and basically dribble myself to sleep. I think that that was the best thing that could have ever happened to me because during those lonely hours in the rec room, I discovered the hunger, the motivation, and the desire to be the best possible basketball player that I could be. And he thought, if everybody else does one practice a day, if I do two a day, I will get better faster. And in the beginning, the difference is not that noticeable. But after five years, and then 10 years, he becomes unbeatable. Whether you're trying to get into law, or you're trying to get into accounting, or you're trying to get into sales, or you're trying to get into marketing, whatever the core activity that you do, making videos, making ads, writing sales pages, actually doing sales calls, whatever it is, if you do two times or four times the volume, you will get better faster and pay down your ignorance debt at a faster rate that compounds. He has compounded the number of hours in the trenches learning the thing.